editing. It's one of the most important things you will do. You spend a lot of time writing and producing your content, but if you don't edit yourself before you submit, then you are doing yourself a great disservice. So think about what's your kryptonite, right? Like what is it that you have a weakness in? We all have weaknesses. Um, become familiar with those. Read over the comments um, every time you turn something in. Um, but think about, do you have a problem with possessives, right? That is it plural or possessive? Do you have a problem with um, which word should you use? Is it attention to detail, right? So with names, is it that you um, use too many words, right? That you just like that sort of long rambling sentence and in this style of writing, it needs to be more concise. So understanding where your weaknesses lie and then being able to go back and work on that is, it's, it's, that's just what you need to do. So possessives, I see that more and more. Um, and this, I you know, like the, the internet is, is like my dream during um, these kinds of discussions because, oh, oh my gosh, it's everywhere, right? So employees, yeah, I'm pretty sure that shouldn't be possessive. Must wash their hands before returning it to work. And the people who make this sign should have done better in school, learned their grammar, right? There, there, there. Um, one of the most effective ways that you can edit yourself, I have found this works for me, might, might work for you, is for you to start at the bottom, right? So you do read it through once, read it through, see how it goes, you'll catch some things. But then go back and start at the bottom and read backwards because you're not actually reading it this way. You're really examining words, right? You're examining punctuation. You're examining, you might hit on AP style things like, oh, that's not AP style. So as you go backwards through the story, your mind isn't able to fill in the gaps like it does when you're reading the story straight through. You've written the story, you've read it straight through once or twice, if there's a missing word, it's crazy how your mind will fill that word in and you'll swear it was there. Um, and when I look at it, I'm like, there's a word missing here. Because for you, you are familiar with the content. So sometimes reading from the bottom up can be a good tip. You also have to read from the top down, of course. Read it several different times. Read it for AP style. Read it for pug. Read it for um, sort of wordy sentences. Just check the names. So name misspellings, this can be a career ender. I'm telling you, um, we take name spelling so seriously and as people take their own names seriously, obviously, that when you make a mistake like this, it can really hurt your credibility and you can only take so many of those, um, right? So Kim Fox, you know, I have a name that I completely understand people who spell and I don't take it personally, but it is with a Y and not an I. And so make sure you get people's correct name spelling. Eric, is it a K or a C? Gonzalez with an S or a Z. And so it is best to ask someone how to spell their name, absolutely, even when you think it's very common, even to have them write it down or to you write it down and show them, is it like this? Whenever I ask somebody, because um, I spent a lot of time working in San Antonio, it would always be, if they said their name was Gonzalez, I'd say S or Z, right? We know what we're talking about. Oftentimes people whose name is Gonzalez, especially if your name is with a Z, you, they would say, my name is Eric Gonzalez with a Z, right? Because that is important, right? It's somebody's name. Is it Columbia Sportswear or Columbia Sportswear, right? So get the right form of the word. Um, on first reference, we're going to use somebody's whole name. So Shanda Benson, right? On first reference. Second time we mention them in the story, second reference, like with, you know, a quote, if we've introduced them in that paraphrase, it's just the last name. But don't misspell it, you know, the next time you use it. And I've seen that before. It's right once, the second time it's incorrect. That is a problem and that will re, um, result in an excess, uh, a big point deduction, right? A big point deduction. AP style. So AP style, you know, we're learning that. I understand that. You're held accountable for PUG when you come into this class, right? So there's an expectation that you understand and can um, accurately use punctuation, use word usage and grammar. AP style, I realize you're learning, right? So, um, Think about AP style in terms of as you're writing, if your fingers pause over the keyboard and you're asking yourself, should I spell this out or abbreviate it? Is it a number? Is it the word? If you're asking yourself that in your head as you type, then you should probably look it up. That's really um, that's really the key. It's, it's not knowing everything in the style book. It's knowing that you don't know and that you've got to look it up. So some common fact errors that we make sometimes, and if it's a fact error, it's going to count, again, a lot of points off. But... Um, so don't mess up the day of the week. Don't tell me it's on a Monday when it's on a Tuesday because that is very bad for your audience. Um, but also, how do you use days of the week? How do you use numbers, dates, times, 
all of those kinds of things covered in AP style. Um, are you using the right word, right? So sometimes um, there's a word in there, I'm like, that's not the word you were looking for. So make sure you know which word you're looking for. And if you aren't sure, it's okay. There's the internet, you can look it up, right? Very important. So one of the things I see a lot now, and I'm not sure why, is I see people use the, the word amount instead of number. A number is something you can, you can count. The amount is like a quantity, like this vast quantity. The amount of water, um, so it, it's not like, anyway, use, use amount and number correctly. I can't even think of a good example at the moment. Um, all right versus all right, like which way do you spell that? You may not be sure, but AP can tell you um, for sure. Accept versus accept. Those are two different words. Compliment versus compliment. There's some mnemonics that can help you remember some of these things, but for the most part, just look it up. It's pretty easy. Um, so what's at stake here? Well, what's at stake is that you should spell the right stake, right? Very important. Um, cite, cite, and cite. That's one that I see all the time. So credibility. This is about your credibility. And while this is funny, you make one spelling mistake online, everybody loses their minds. That's so true, right? We judge people when they make spelling mistakes. When you're doing it professionally, there's a lot at stake. So opinion words, edit yourself for opinion words because we don't need these sort of extra words like fortunately, unfortunately, luckily, thankfully. Um, just make the point, right? Just make the point. Um, show me, don't tell me um, what this is. Don't say this is the best something. Give me detail about it. It's not the greatest, the worst. It's not a tragedy. That's a very overused word. I mean, things may be tragic in a tragedy, but it's overused when we're writing. So um, use opinion words sparingly as your writing the words. If somebody has it in a quote, that's perfectly okay, right? So quotes belong to the person who said them. And you can absolutely use opinion words and quotes. And you can even use opinions of people that you're quoting, right? In paraphrases, you can have their opinions in there. It's not about not having opinions. It's that your opinion should not throw, show through. And you don't want these sort of fluffy extra words that you frankly don't need. Um, you know, Grammar errors are so serious in this class, so serious that they result in a five-point deduction for pug errors, five-point deduction each time. That's, that's tough, I realize, but um, when we're coming into this, there's an expectation that we know these rules, and this is a sign of professional writing. So when you go to apply for an internship, one of the biggest killers is when they ask for writing samples because most of our professions ask for writing samples, and you will have some from this class. If there's an error in the first sentence, if there's an error in the first couple of paragraphs, you know, if really if there's an error anywhere in there, misspelled word, um, bad punctuation, that is going to be harmful, right? It's, it's hard to bring somebody into the office as an intern or for a job that has those problems because they realize somebody in the office is going to have to fix that. So there's a rubric um, that you can check out, but it basically goes like this. If you make a fact error, that's a name or something like that, anywhere from 10 points to 50 points, depends on what it is and how often it happens. But, you know, name errors generally on the side of 50 points off, like failing, failing the assignment. AP style, two points, pug, five points, um, opinion words, you know, that kind of stuff. So watch, watch that, check the rubric. And, um, You've got to proofread, right? So the worst thing you can do is complete your assignment right before the deadline and just submit it to tracks without going over it. Give yourself plenty of time to read it. In fact, it's great if you can put a couple hours between the time you finish writing it and you go back and edit it again. So that can be very helpful. There's going to be a quick editing exercise posted um, in tracks, so you can go over that if you would like. It'll look something like this where you've got to go through and see what are some of the issues here, and then the key will be on there for you too um, so that you can see how you did. All right, so don't do this. Do not make a sign when you go to work somewhere, your graduation headquarters, oh my gosh. Don't do that, all right?